Hello. <laughs> Hello again. Right. Now this is the serious business. Let's get down to triple black business. <laughs> Yes, thank the Lord, praise the Lord, I have a GS adventure back in my life. This is a 2021, which is exactly the same as a 22, GS, uh, R1250 GS adventure. And it's got the massive panniers on. I've literally just picked it up from BMW and I'm so happy. I've missed this bike so much in my life. And... I yeah I just thought I'd jump on board and keep up the flow and um, come and talk to you now I will obviously talk about the bike but there's other stuff I'm going to talk about in this video a bit more personal a bit more back to life a bit more um, uh, helpful hopefully to some of you guys but uh, yeah without further ado I'm going to get on board and um, get going I just thought I'd do a quick outside little look at it because it's super clean now, and it's not going to be clean for much longer. And this has got the option 719 uh, cylinder heads things, whatever they're called. Yeah, that goes the cylinder heads. Um, belt cover? Is it still called a belt cover? Blingy mirrors. I mean, they are very silver. I prefer the... I like the sort of slightly darker grey. And, yeah, it's not a review. Well, I mean, you can probably use it as a review if you like, but you know... You know I love this bike, so um, you kind of know what I'm going to say, I guess. There is a, uh, a Kropovich under there, which, to be honest with you, is probably not worth buying, if I'm really honest, because it's really expensive and it makes no difference to the sound at all, I don't think. I can't recognise it anyway. Uh, and these are the pannier extenders, which are quite interesting. Um, <laughs> how many locks have we got? One, two, three, four, five, ten... 11 12 so we've got 12 locks on the luggage now <laughs> but uh, you can get an awful lot in here an awful lot look at that look at that balance isn't that one finger look at that look at that balance so you can that's why I love center stands just now you can fiddle with the front wheel or rear wheel that's one finger pushing down perfect weight distribution <laughs> Anyway, let's get on board, shall we? And uh, have a little bimble. I'm gonna t there's nothing in these boxes at the moment, but I need to get them uh, to the office. Oh, how I've missed you. Oh, baby. And the last one I had had a gold bar, the 40th. This has got a nice black bar, but weirdly, it's got the gold wheels. Anyway. Oh, feel it feel it and this one's got a heated seat which is the first time I've ever used a heated seat and it was brilliant come on come on baby there we go talk about making my life hard this video is really about things that make me happy this bike is one of them uh, and I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to be as fairly as honest as I sort of can or want to be about maybe one of the reasons why I haven't been in touch the last couple of years and that is because of the old dog depression depression and anxiety um, I know quite a few of you often bring up a video or a couple of videos I did years ago when I mentioned this and that I struggle and a lot of you are surprised because again on the from the outside it looks like hey look at this guy he's got everything and a big wang so how why is he depressed but uh it's you got to think of it more like a, 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 an illness a disease like cancer or the next thing um, but I'm going to share with you some things which I've been doing recently which have really helped and the best thing I'm just going to open my flap a little bit, it's getting a bit hot. And now it's windy. And the best thing... Oh, look at this! Oh, this does not help me. Look at this fucking scuzz bucket of shit. This fly-tipping mother 
fuckers. Look at it. It's an absolute fucking disgrace. If, um, if any of you do this, then fuck you and fuck everyone that you like and love in your life. And if you know of anyone that does this and thinks it's cool or fun or, or funny that they can get away with it, then you need to call them out and you need to fucking call the, call the authorities about it because they're, it's a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace. And I think it's such a sign of complete disrespect for everyone else. Anyway, <laughs> calm down. Calm down, Chrissy. How's your old viewpoint? Can you, you probably can't, shall I lower the, I'll lower the uh, wind deflector so you can see through it. Or is that now just got a line in it? Maybe I'll stand up. Oh, hello GS. Anyway, right. So what makes me better? What's the best thing I've discovered? The best thing, <laughs> have I drawn this out a bit? The best thing is walking. Now you may say, you what, Chris? Walking? And I'm gonna say, yes, walking. So every morning, oh, it's too windy now. Every morning, when I lie in bed and I wake up, my alarm goes off. And before I've even turned over and pressed snooze, my mind is already telling me how much of a dick I am and how much I hate myself. And that is, it's, it's not healthy. So you've got to do something as quick as you can. And if you're anything like me, you'll constantly make excuses to not do things. And if there's anything standing in the way, like if you, if for example, you wanted to go to the gym to get your mind better and body better. If I wanted to go to the gym, there's, there's loads of obstacles, like silly things like, oh, I haven't got any fresh gym kit or I've got to get in the car, I've got to drive all the way over there. And what if the people in the gym laugh at me? And, or what if I feel insecure? I hate having showers and all that sort of stuff and, and weird social anxiety situations. So you need to limit your obstacles. And this is why I find, I, I mean, I'm blessed to live in a beautiful place like this, but I find just to be able to get up, get straight up, as soon as you wake up, get straight up, don't dwell and, and mong around in bed, um, just thinking about miserable shit. All you've got to do, you don't even have to have a shower, get up, go and put your boots on, or just shoes, whatever, and walk out the door. If you're not blessed to live in a lovely place like this, it doesn't matter, you can still just walk around the block, get the blood flowing. And I can honestly tell you that out of all my years of trying to deal with this, and working with numerous um, therapists, numerous drugs, antidepressants, pills, uh, hypnosis and all this weird shit, crystals and fucking hippie stuff, all of that I've looked into. I can honestly tell you that, that going for a walk every morning has improved my mood dramatically. Dramatically. Now the first 10 minutes of you getting out is going to be miserable. It is. And, you're gonna, and when it rains you'll be like, I don't want to go out. But after that first sort of 10 minutes and you warm up and the blood starts flowing around your body it feels like a sort of cleansing system and I start getting motivated and I start feeling good and after half an hour I mean now I do about seven kilometers every morning and after about half an hour I actually can't wait to start the day whereas you know an hour before that I'm lounging in bed thinking that you know the most dark thoughts about whether I'd be better off even starting the day at all and um, it's honestly just one of the best things you can do and it's free as long as you can walk which I know some of you might struggle with obviously if you have an, an issue or cycling is another good one as well you could equally just do it popping on a bicycle so I can't recommend that enough that is my number one tip to deal with anxiety and depression is a morning walk you can do it in the afternoon if you want, but I find the morning, that's when i that's when it strikes me the worst, is in the morning. That's when I feel the most shit. And I actually even do now, I started up a little um, Instagram walking channel where I, it's called Reboot Christopher. And I, literally all I do in my morning walks, I just go on a live stream and I just talk to other weirdos. Thank you. 
and we just have a chat and it doesn't it's not a, a amazing chat some days we have a really in-depth chat about stuff other days we talk about bikes and we talk about shit and and that's it and, it, and it's about I want to make this conversation as in about depression and anxiety I want to make it an, a, a non um, embarrassing thing it's not embarrassing at all and I guarantee you all of you if not yourselves have got friends who you would never think are going through absolute fucking hell right now you would never think it particularly after this last two years of fucking shittery and there's there's so many of us going through this so many of us and you're not alone and I think that's that's literally all my message is you're not alone I'm gonna go the long way round just because I'm really enjoying riding this bike and I haven't enjoyed riding a bike honestly for quite a while oh hello darling I love you I bloody ruddy bloody iddy uddy love your udders <laughs> sometimes by the way this this bike camera angle makes it look like the front wheels off the ground but it's not at all ever officer officer dibble so yeah so my mission is to talk about this as much as i can because i i had an absolute breakdown genuinely i had a breakdown just after christmas and that i've never felt worse which is why i kind of haven't been on 44 teeth i haven't really been doing this and it's been everything seems to have been building up to this crescendo of just shittery and um there was numerous factors as to why it happened. There's some issues in my personal life, relationships and, and things like that. Hello, darling. And um, and then I got COVID at the same time and I've been isolated for so long, I can't travel. I've, I've decided to abstain at the moment from medical interventions. So it's been n near impossible for me to travel. So I felt so trapped and alone and the governments of the world are uh, treating me like a disgrace, like some kind of vampire. And um, anyway, so all of these things just built up and I've gone down these big tinfoil hats. Yes, I'm a tinfoil hatter. Rabbit holes. Um, which actually, a lot of these so-called conspiracies seem to be pretty bloody <laughs> real now, don't they? But anyway, let's not get into that on this subject just yet. I will get into that in a later video, but this isn't about that. I'm just saying it's a contributing factor and it's really affected me because I, I can't... Injustice, as you, <laughs> as you may know, injustice really, really affects me. I can't deal with it. I find it so unfair and I just... And that's why I think about the last couple of years. There's been so much injustice and I can't you know my brain can't work it out so I've been really struggling uh, and then yeah it all came to a to a head about we're well, probably about two months two months ago now and um, I just I just I just absolutely lost it and I just could, I couldn't eat I didn't oh and at that point as well I just just before this sort of personal life nightmare happened I um I decided that I couldn't really, I needed some support and I went, decided to go back on medication because I'd, previously I'd been on Citalopram for a few years and then at the beginning of last year, I just, like February time, I decided that I wanted to try without it. And I did okay and it was fine, but then anyway, I just started really getting pretty dark and uh, I was like, right, come on. And treating my loved ones with real disrespect actually and just not being a nice person and always wanting to push everyone away because I felt in honest in honesty and this is yeah I'm not I'm again I'm not trying to appeal for sympathy here I'm telling you my story or parts of my story which you may um, what's the word you may relate to and it may help you so I would, off, I would think the world is better off without me. I'm genuinely, you know, I would genuinely think that every day and I would just beat myself up about it. I self-harmed for a, a few years and I, I, just, I, I just genuinely thought that people, it would, be better, it would be better if I didn't, if nobody had anything to do with me 
because then if anything did happen in the future no one would miss me and that was a that's a terribly dark it's quite emotional for me to talk about this and that was a terribly dark thing to think and that's what I used to think every hour of every day and oh, and after several <laughs> years of feeling like that and all these other issues it just I just snapped um, anyway I'd just gone back on these pills and this this uh, relationship issue happened to me and it was the final straw it was all my fault I was a complete arsehole actually where are we? Are we still recording? Yeah. It was all my fault. I don't blame anyone else. It's all 100% my fault. Um, but it just so happened that I'd started going back on the pills. And when you start medication, oh fuck's sake. When you start meds, often the first... It's alright mate, I'll get by. I'll get by. You'll be alright. Cheers dude. Forgot I've got massive bloody wang ears on. So when you start medication, the first couple of weeks are really difficult. Like, you'll end up feeling much worse <laughs> than you did. But you've kind of got to break through this barrier. Yeah, so then, and then I couldn't eat. I didn't, the, the pills made me, and the anxiety. I, I didn't eat for four days. Well, I was on about 250 calories a day. It was insane. Uh, my heated grips are getting a bit hot. Let's just, uh... Uh, so I didn't eat, which doesn't, which makes you even worse, makes you feel even shitter. And that was it. I was just, that was it. And, and thank God for two people. I mean, everyone else, all my friends helped. But there's two people that absolutely I can never, ever forget. One is my girlfriend, Jen. She was absolutely incredible. And I was such a horrible person to her as well. And I was so disrespectful and such an asshole. But she still stood by and helped. And I will never, ever forget that. That was amazing. Uh, and the other one is Gary Bridgestone, who's... <laughs> believe it or not, the uh, North European marketing manager for Bridgestone. We've become such good friends over the years, working together. And, man, I will never forget, Gary, how you helped me. And uh, I would be on the phone to him every hour, almost. Just not, I couldn't cope. I just couldn't cope. I was just in tears, and I just didn't understand. I just couldn't, couldn't deal with it. Anyway, I fucking lost it. I, I can't, I didn't, you know, it was such a sort of weird time. I genuinely struggling to remember how how I got through that that sort of that crunch period I think it was the the, the revelations of the my my actions which had been very bad had sort of all come out and all the skeletons had come out of the closet all at this one time this big crescendo and everything I was worried about in life and the bad things I've done and it all sort of came to light at the same time and it was almost like a sort of cleansing and it's like well look it's out now and I can't do anything about it apart from try to move forward and get rid of the shame of what I felt and try to be kind to myself I know I did wrong and and I'm sure many of you you know we've all made <laughs> we've all made fucking stupid mistakes because we're human beings and that's what we do but once you've sort of dealt with those and realized that they are mistakes and you genuinely realize they're mistakes you most people tend to learn from them and they don't do it again but you can't beat yourself up about those mistakes forever because it's just never going to get you anywhere and you're going to perpetually live in this self self-hating mindset so that, that sort of realisation, it was rock bottom basically, and that in itself, once I'd got there, was like, okay, well, it, it genuinely felt like, even though I was really <laughs> in despair, it genuinely felt like there was, there was only one way, which was up. And I've just done, this, the, the news may, well, should probably be out actually, which is the, the 44th video I did where we mentioned the, the depression and stuff. Uh, and I don't think I did a very good job explaining it in that video. Um, I didn't do a good job. There were so many things I wanted to talk about, which is, I guess, why I'm making this video right now. Sorry, sorry. Uh, battery change, SD card change. And I've just tried to go back to figure out where, uh, where it stopped. So I think it was talking about what I've decided to try and do. I guess my mission is to 
try and figure out how to help as many people as possible. And I don't think it's, I mean, it's a massively complicated issue and everyone is completely different. And everyone has different needs and different problems. But I think all we, the, where we start is we just need to give people the confidence to be able to feel like they can talk about it openly without any stigma, without any embarrassment. If this is a, a disease which even more so now after the last few years is like, uh, it's more, <laughs> in my opinion, it's more problematic than the one we've supposedly been dealing with for the last, God knows, like the last couple of years. Fucking traffic. So my little idea was to come up with a, like an emblem, like a little, like a little sticker, which its only purpose, and this little sticker you'll stick on your bike or your van or your car or whatever, its only purpose is to serve as a signal to someone else that they're not alone. That's its primary purpose. And yes, you may, oh look at little partridges. And you may, if you're at a bike meet or something, you may go, oh, hey, that's a cool sticker. Oh yeah, you know, whatever. And you might st start up a conversation with a stranger about it. Or you may just simply be able to, you know, nod at someone like, yes, he gets it. He understands me. I'm not alone. And it's as simple as that. And I don't want to be, you know, trying to start any sort of massive charities where it's all like, oh, um, and it's a bit too sort of poor me. I want to, I want to encourage people to talk about it, but have fun at the same time, because you've got to have fun. You can't, you know, if, if, if you live your life being told you're a victim every day, how do you think you're going to feel? You're going to feel like a victim. So we've all got our problems and I don't want to you know, make I don't want to make it make light of those problems and make them seem that there's you know that they're they're not serious they are serious but we've got to be able to have fun at the same time otherwise we're all fucked and motorcycling is a common bond between all of us here on this channel and in the walking channel and all that stuff and it seems to make so much sense to just go well hang on let's have fun with motorbikes and at least show these people, these other friends of ours, that they're not alone and they can feel comfortable. And that's it, because I think, well, that's what I would like, you know, and, and it's, a, it's a good example of this, and I've been psychoanalyzing myself a lot, is I hate London Underground and tube trains. And I, I haven't been on a tube train for must be 15, 20 years now. I just couldn't deal with it. And I would be sat there like sweating, like, oh my God, like sort of claustrophobia, can't cope with this really horrible scenario set up. But then I, I, I realized that if the train was empty, I wouldn't have a problem with it at all. So actually my problem is other people. And I think my problem, a lot of my anxieties is what other people will think of me if I start having a bit of a, you know, uh, bit of a freak out which actually has never really happened. Yes, I've had a couple of panic attacks, but it, you know, it, it, I've never done anything stupid. Like I've never shat my pants in public and gone, oh my God, what am I gonna do? You know, those sort of, the nightmares you have of going to school with no clothes on. Th those things have never happened. But anyway, my point is, I think it's other people. My fear of the unknown reactions of other people and if they're assholes or not, that's the bit which makes me more anxious. So if we, if we can, if I can show someone else that I'm not one of those people and I will treat you with care and love as a human being, that's it, that's all, that's, it's as simple as that, whilst having fun with motorbikes. But <laughs> who knows, it may just be a load of shit. But anyway, it is what it is, I suppose. So yeah, so it's called permission to talk and the talk is like an engine talk. And the stickers are free, they're on the 44 Teeth website. We do ask to pay, you pay for postage and packing, because, I don't know, if you want one in Timbuktu, it's gonna cost us a lot of money. Yeah, and the symbol, this is what I wanted to say on the, the, the news show. So the symbol is, it's around this lightning bolt. And there's a really cool, a lightning bolt symbolizes 
Well, I found it on a website somewhere, so it may be bullshit. Like an awakening and the dispersion of ignorance. And I think this sounds really kind of like what I'm what I want to promote, which is this this sort of flash, this kind of come on, we're okay. So that lightning symbol. I'm going to try and incorporate in almost all of my stuff that I do for the next couple of years anyway. Anyway, we're at Barnstormer now, so look, I would really dearly like you to go for a walk in the morning if you're struggling and really just try, please just try and do that before you get into any sort of drugs or any sort of other care. You may have already investigated um, what other situations and things are available for you and not found anything. So so just try a really simple thing, which is to just go for a walk and be in the present. Be in the present. That's the other thing about walking and riding motorbikes. You don't have time to think about the future or dwell on the regrets of the past. So look, I hope this has helped a couple of you. Be kind to each other and most importantly, be kind to yourself, no matter what you've done. All right, guys, see you on the next one. Ciao.